So now I told you this is not how you're going to set this up in your network. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, like we just discussed, if you had 15 different uh, spokes on here, you'd have to have a shit ton of frame relay maps. And you can use frame relay inverse ARP, except that it's not going to map the spoke to spoke because that frame relay inverse ARP command we'll look in detail later is only going to work to your hub. So you'd have a mapping to the hub. You'd still have to figure out a way to get your spoke to spoke mapping set up. Once you throw a routing protocol on here, we haven't thrown a routing protocol on here, you're going to run into a couple of problems. One of the problems is split horizon. I talked about this in the first lesson, I believe, a little bit. So basically, if we were to enable a routing protocol on here, it'd be fine with just the connections that we have right now because we have our frame relay maps. It's not going to matter. Say that we throw um, a loopback or, or a, a LAN address on here, 10.1.2.0 24 and we advertise that up through a routing command. We advertise it up to R1. R1 learns it and says, okay, anytime I need to send a packet to that LAN subnet, I just go out 00 slash 0. The problem is, is that it's not going to advertise that onto R3 because it's learning that advertisement through the serial link, 00 slash 0. And the split horizon rule says, I can't advertise that back out the same interface that I learned it. So you end up with fractured routing. And what we're going to find out, and we'll show this later, is that the way to get around this, there's ways to get around it in the routing protocols. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start using sub-interfaces and make all these point-to-point -point connections. And we will show that in a future lesson. But I wanted to show you this basic configuration just so you know what it looks like and you can have something to compare it with when we start configuring sub interfaces. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this lesson up. Okay, so Frame Relay is well suited for hub and spoke design. It takes advantage of Frame Relay's ability to assign more than one virtual circuit to a single physical access circuit. So in our example, we saw that we only needed three actual connections. We only had to use three interfaces, one on each router, although we had connectivity between all three devices whereas if we were doing point to point we'd have to have two connections on each so it saves there for the interface cost plus we can also provision a virtual circuit for a whole lot cheaper than we can a point to point connection the downfall is that if your hub router goes down you're not going to have spoke to spoke communication and we're doing the configuration that's probably the biggest piece is that you know once you get over the the foreign aspects of the frame relay map statement, which aren't that bad, just that local DLC is usually the, the killer there. Uh, you also have to remember that you do have to set up that statement from spoke to spoke so that you can have communications from spoke to spoke. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as our point to point configuration. You're going to set the frame relay encapsulation. You're going to set an LMI type if necessary. Generally, you're not going to have to do that because AutoSense will take care of that for you. Uh, we're going to disable frame relay inverse ARP. That is an optional step in this lesson. We've disabled it because we want to keep that piece out of it for right now. You're going to configure your layer 3 address on the interface. Don't forget that. I've done that a number of times when I've configured frame relay. I've gone through all the steps and forgot to put a layer 3 address. I'll set the mapping up even. Nothing will really tell you until you do a show IP interface brief and you notice, hey, there's no freaking IP address on there. So don't forget this step. It's not really a frame relay step, but don't forget it. And then finally, you're going to need to, in this case, manually configure the frame relay IP to DELC mappings, including the spoke to spoke mappings. And that's the big takeaway from this lesson is is how to handle spoke to spoke communication. Now in future lessons, we're gonna take a look at this and see that when it comes to running routing protocols, you're not going to want to run a hub and spoke using just physical interfaces. We're going to take a look at the concept of sub interfaces. And some of you have probably run into this before, but we'll go through this in a little bit of detail with a lesson. And then we'll show you a better design for this that will get around some of the flaws that are induced with running routing protocols over a pure physical interface hub and spoke network. That's going to wrap this lesson up. Thanks once again for joining me in the packet lab today. As always, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.